Good morning, folks. We've got news today in space, climate, and beneath our feet. But we've also got space weather, so that's where we'll begin. With the last 24 hours on our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the southern coronal hole turning in more, the bright active regions crackling, only minor filament activity around the limbs. The sunspots themselves have progressed another day, but while the southern active region decayed slightly, the north has grown. It is exiting Earth-facing position as it develops its complexity. Quick look at the solar wind. Blue panel, second from the top, right side, the discontinuity solar wind magnetic field jolt was the tiny CME glancing blow we had expected last night. Its kinetic telemetry was weak, barely noticeable, but it did carry the magnetism of the eruption, so we are back up slightly into geomagnetic instability this morning. Quick look at seismic activity. 5.6 in Iceland is well above average. There have been a flurry of aftershocks there near the southwest corner of the island. Let's hit the science article starting with Chandra, the supernova remnant 1987A. It has been diagnosed to have a neutron star at the center, and their amazing animations notwithstanding, conclusions like this require a lot of assumptions about the nova event itself, about neutron stars, how fast particles should be moving, and how long it should take to accelerate them. That's where we enter fantasy land where, luckily, we have pretty pictures to supplement the potential lack of reality. Up next, this is a water canister exploding. It looks cool on the ground, but I wish I could have actually seen it blow way up high. The continued studying of fake clouds in the high atmosphere is slow moving, but here, the use of water as opposed to the aluminum oxides they used in previous studies at least provides the rest of us with a hint that the studies suggesting those oxides are a bad idea are being taken seriously by the officials. Apparently, the binary systems nearby have been mapped. See if you can spot the problem before I mention it at the end. So they say they have mapped a million nearby binary systems within 6,000 light years of the sun. But apparently, they forgot to tell their computers that they don't walk around hand in hand. They orbit their partners. There's not a single angle of orbit represented in a single binary of Berkeley's new animation. Last but not least, we've got two on ice ages. First, in an attempt to solve the missing ice problem from the last glacial maximum, they took a different approach to the process and were able to recreate the missing ice from that period. Sure, it destroyed the accuracy with other time periods, which is the problem with ready, fire, aim, but hey, apparently that's good enough for nature communications. And speaking of the last glacial period, it was indeed a grander event among the guesses of its severity. New work shows wider extent of cold, ice, permafrost, etc. As a general rule, the hashed or dotted lines here are where things would have retained their ice age feel pretty permanently. The blue is where events like what just happened to Texas would come annually and with great severity. Where do you live? Folks, our playlists are the best way to learn more about the climate issues they somehow forget to mention when discussing climate change on TV, for more on how little they understand outer space or the cyclical disaster of Earth, the ongoing magnetic excursion, or the relationship between the planets, the sun, solar flares, and earthquakes. Click Suspicious Observers right here on YouTube to go to our channel homepage and find those playlists. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.